Hey! I find really odd is people always ask me to recommend books, even though I've made an enormous amount of videos about top recommended books on XYZ specific topic. Um, people have been asking for this video, and I have a link below to the translations that belong to this video. And those uh, translations are copyright by me, but you're free to use them anywhere. So it's a, a roughly a three-page or so, I maybe mean, it's a two-page PDF document with all the citations, with book and verse below. You don't truly know something unless you could stick it in a nutshell. Um, if you haven't watched many or any of my videos, I've been a poly translator now for over uh, two decades. I used to be a member of the Polytech Society in England. Um, one of the founders there was Caroline Augustus Foley Rees Davis, CAF Rees Davis, extremely, very, very prolific poly translator. Um, in this video, I'd like to give you, uh, and nobody really likes book and verse citations because anybody could read that, but finding genuine translations or being able to stick something into a nutshell is not done in Buddhism. And when you do, I'm sure there's probably some YouTube videos that say Buddhism in a nutshell, and it will not have anything in there about original Buddhism. Let me please emphasize and stress the words original Buddhism. And what do I mean by original? I mean pre-sectarian. Long before the Sarwasti Wadins came along, which later became the Tetawadins, all those yellow-robed guys running around Southeast Asia, those are Tetawadins. That is not original to Buddhism. It's not just as Catholicism is not original to Christianity. Obviously so. Not to uh, make approach to any Catholic. It's like, well, you know, even a Catholic knows Catholicism is not original to Christianity. Um, so I'd like to stick Buddhism into a nutshell. We're only going to talk about the pre-sectarian pre -sectarian stuff, i.e. the original article. In other words, lacking a time machine. And there is a pre-sectarian corpus that's actually found within the Nikayas, the Diga Nikaya, Majima, Samyura Nikaya, and Gotaro Nikaya, and Kodaka Nikaya, and are the oldest sections within those. Pali now has been a dead language for thousands of years. So I'm a translator of it. If you want to, <clears throat> I don't know, waste a significant portion of your life Try uh, learning to translate it. Uh, a language has been dead now for thousands of years, and that's what I've been doing for 20 plus years. Um, so I'd like to stick Buddhism into a nutshell. Mary, um, very simply synthesize it. Since I myself, and you may or may not be interested in this, am only interested in what the original taught. I'm lacking a time machine. There actually is an original corpus, of course. So <clears throat> let's start off here. In no particular order, go over some translations, um, and I'll leave out book and verse since I left the document in the PDF download if you want to say, well, what's the citation on that? That's the reason why I have the document attached in the description below. The create is sacrificed to the uncreate. And if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you know, you actually have the beautiful ring, which is the create, yeah, is sacrificed to the un... By the way, the Lord of the Rings is based on uh, texts of the Kalevala. I don't know if you know or are familiar with the Kalevala. But this is an ancient metaphysical principle where that which is create is beautiful, but of course it is ephemeral and temporal. And we get attached to something that causes us suffering. It's like in the Lord of the Rings, trying to make a perfect analogy, that uh, we get attached to that which is beautiful but is temporal and creates. So this is the passage uh, from original Buddhist text of 2,400 years ago. The create is sacrificed to the fires of the uncreate. This is the meaning of the word the jhana or samadhi. That word, and there's no word I despise more than the word meditation, which doesn't refer to anything. But when we actually go to the original term, terminology of that, we're talking about samadhi. Um, the word is a jhana, which comes from the word jayati, which means to burn. In other words, you're sacrificed. It's like, the, remember the ring gets tossed back into the fires? And it's like, well, we're addicted to the ring, right? It's so beautiful, so pretty. But yeah, but... We have to let go of it. And there is a real hardcore fundamental principle behind uh, throwing uh, the create back into the fires of the uncreate. That's one of the uh, stepping stones of disobjectification, theurgy, i.e. transcendence, uh, liberation from false identity. We're addicted to things 
that are beautiful yet superficial and ephemeral. I spent a lot of time on that quote for a specific reason. Um, here's another passage. Like I said, if you want to know book and verse, look up the uh, text in the description below because I list book and verse, even though this is from Iriwutaka 123. Uh, Buddha is meant that, or Brahman, which uh, makes uh, Brahmakakur, the, the Brahman wheel, the wheel of the absolute move. Um, same way with the word Tathagata. Tathagata literally means you have arrived at Tat, as in Tatvamasi, you have arrived at the absolute. Uh, Buddha is not a person, by the way. When people see statues, gold statues, oh, that's the Buddha. It's like, no, 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 no. That's like, what do you mean? That's a Buddha statue. No, it's not. That's a representation of a psychophysical entity, you know, with flesh, blood, and bones. Every statue out there that you think is a Buddha statue, by definition, since I'm an expert and a poly translator of many decades, that's not a Buddha statue at all. Absolutely is not. That is a uh, incorrect, r radical uh, um, creation of a psychophysical entity that we would call uh, Sakyamuni or Siddhartha. That's never a Buddha. That's the reason why earliest Buddhist iconography from the 3rd century uh, BCE which show an empty seed or a pillar of fire. You cannot show a physical face and form and call that a Buddha because a Buddha specifically in doctrine is Akyamkana, which literally means a non-person or a non-entity. The soul is having Brahmabhu, meaning having become Brahman. And that was in reference to the Agathon of the Absolute. If you think Brahman is a god or something like that, no, the terminology is in reference to the Absolute. Um, um, the Gautama is a teacher of uh, Advayavadin, or non-dualism, so genuine original Buddhism, emphasizing the word original, is 100% no different than Advayavadanta of Sankara. Nothing is known except through the modality of the knower. The only difference is in how one approaches the teachings therein of retroduction and the path of uh, liberation through disobjectification and theurgy, or the Indians called it neti neti which means not this, not that. Um, let's get on to some uh, more uh, key passages. Um, what is the one benefit, Master Gautama, for which you exist? The one thing that the Tathagata exists for is the fruit and emancipation by illumination. Um, followers, this body is to be seen as it really is, merely the product of uh, past karma, the Tathagata, the Buddha, is a designation for a Brahmabhu, meaning become Brahman. In other words, standing uh, at the station of the Absolute. The well-centered or liberated citta, i.e. noose or spirit, um, is the path for attainment of a Brahman. This is immortality, that being the liberated uh, noose or citta, which does not cling after anything. By the way, the only noun in doctrine which is said not to cling after something, potentially, is the citta. Suvimutta chattasana banam. There is one of the most important passages in doctrine. The meaning of nirvana is the thoroughly liberated citta or noose or spirit, it doesn't matter what word you use. Suvimutta chattasana banam. Here is another insanely important passage. Like I said, if you want the book in reference, just look it up in the, the document uh, in the description below. Tithatati, uh, which means steadfast or fixed in the soul, means that one is supremely fixed within the citta. In other words, to have the station of supreme fixation and unmovability of the soul means that uh, you have uh, uh, completely uh, liberated the citta from false identity. So the chida is the, uh, the Greek word would be nous, is the axis mundi of uh, potentiality. Now what is potential is not actual. I tell this people all the time. People want to talk about free will. I say, you want to talk about free will, let's talk about acorns and oak trees. I said, how many board feet of lumber can you get out of an acorn? And the answer is none. An acorn and an oak tree are genetically identical. You cannot get any lumber out of an acorn. Why? Because an acorn is pure potential. Yes, it has no actuality as far as relational to wood. Let's just call wood liberation, right, as an analogy. You can't get any lumber out of an acorn. Well, human beings have free will or not. I don't know. Is the free will, is the will actualized? Yes. We shouldn't be talking about human beings having free will. 
If you talk about whether it's actual or whether it's merely potential, like most human beings. Um, the chitta, which is supremely emancipated, like the full moon on the 15th day of dark of night. That's actually really important for another reason. However, the English translation doesn't come across uh, very well to people. Here's the single most philosophically important passage in original Buddhist doctrine. This is Majimina K1.436. It occurs many places, actually. Whatever forms, feelings, perceptions, experiences, or consciousness, i.e. rupa vedana, sana, sankara, dhinyana, there is, i.e. the five aggregates, i.e. the psychophysical lump or heap. There he sees these, be, these to be without permanence, as suffering, as ill, as a plague, a boil, a sting, a pain, an affliction, as foreign, as otherness, as empty, shunyata, as without self, self with a capital S, yeah? And the Pali word for that is anatati, yeah? So he turns the chitta, or a noose or mind, doesn't matter what word you use, which is not an aggregate, the chitta is not an aggregate. Away from these, yeah? Very, very philosophically important. The chitta is turned away from the psychophysical. That would be like in our radio analogy, the signal is turned away from the radio, components of transistors and batteries and speakers. The signal turns itself away from broadcasting through the radio, because the broadcast is not a signal. The broadcast is the consubstantiality of the signal and the radio. So, to use a simple analogy, it would be like the signal turning away from the radio and all its constituent components. You get that? The chitta is turned away from these. Therein he gathers the chitta within the realm of immortality. Amatoya datoya. It literally translates as the realm of immortality. This is uh, tranquility. This is that which is most excellent, just as in Suvi Mutta Chittasana Bhan. The thoroughly liberated chitta means nirvana. Yes? By the way, nirvana is a nirvriti or no more turning. You could also say it's, uh, and there's an argument on this, it doesn't really matter. That it could be nisbanda, which means from bondage. Um, really, nirvana is uh, from uh, prefixual nir means opposite to, inverse of, or ending of, riti, or turning, becoming. In other words, the ending of becoming, or bhava nu bhava, becoming and becoming, I mean, that's the definition of sansara, because sansara literally means, in English, the word is samsara, it means uh, to go round and round, samsarati, which means to be with or conjoined with perpetual perturbation. Yeah. So that's the single most important philosophical passage in original, keyword original Buddhism. Um, attained to the steadfast of the soul, the chitta is calm. They're cleansed of the entire world, taintless anasava, having brahmabhu, become brahman. Okay. The, uh, the purification of one's own chitta, I use the word chitta, you can say spirit, noose, mind. The purification of one's own chitta means the light or jyoti within one's own uh, chitta is the very soul, atano. Incredibly philosophically important. The purification of one's own chitta, this is Buddha Sasana, which translates as the doctrine of the Buddha. That's Dignikaya 2.49. Incredibly philosophically important. In other words, the Alpha and the Omega of original Buddhism is uh, Suvi Mutta Chattasa, the thoroughly liberated chitta. Yep. Now, if you were to believe <laughs> current Buddhism, and I use Buddhism with air quotations, there's only, <clears throat> there's emptiness, there is no soul. They teach there's no such passage in doctrine. There is no soul, you're just a psychophysical lump, and like nirvana is like spiritual suicide. It's like flushing yourself down a cosmic toilet. There is no such illusion reference Original Buddhism does not teach, because I've had, over the decades, listen to me, girlfriend, right now, listen to me, okay? I have had, over the decades, countless thousands, literally thousands of people email me. I always, they, they would say to me, something along the lines of this, I always despised Buddhism because I thought it was a bunch of nihilistic, soul-denying poppycock. I said, well, that's not the original article. Completely shocks them. I give them passages, give them stuff to read. Whoa, wow, this is amazing. This stuff's great. You know. 
You could draw what you will from that. I don't want to talk about that much more. Um, Void is this body of the soul, and upon that which the soul subsists. This, gnosis as is meant, means liberation of the citta by shunyata. Liberation by shunyata, as Samirana K of 4.297, literally means via negativa. There's no such thing as emptiness. Emptiness is a qualifier. This is empty of this, that is empty of that. It's a via negativa methodology. It is specifically Indian retroduction. Specifically, it is theurgy retroduction, but... The subjugation of becoming, bhavanirodha, nibbana, means the subjugation of the five aggregates means nirvana. The subjugation of the five aggregates means the subjugation of becoming. But what subjugates them? So you see, there has to be something other than the psychophysical that is, that is uh, freed from it. You know, there's no such thing as liberation without a liberant. I mean, it's just completely ridiculous. Well, there's liberation, but nobody attains it. There is paramum sukum, which translates as ultimate bliss, but nobody that gets there. You see, this is not within the teachings. What this is found within is all the stuff today scattered across the lands far and wide across this earth. That, oh, my teacher said, it's like, I don't care what your teacher said. I'm actually interested in what the original said. And here's something that's really important. When people quote their teachers, like, you know, I'm glad you like your teacher so much, but you know what? Your teacher, no matter how hubristic they are, will never, ever in a million years say that their own blather is equal to or superior to that of the original teachings. Actually, there probably are some, but not many. So, Udana 81. This passage really pisses off a modern Buddhist. <laughs> There is, followers, an unborn, an unoriginated, an unmade, and an unformed, i.e. Brahman, i.e. the soul. If there were not, O oh followers, this unborn, this unoriginated, and unmade, and unformed, there would be no way out for the born, the originated, the made, and the formed. What that basically translates into is, yes, there is a liberant, there is a metaphysical subject, which is liberated from the false identity of all this psychophysical garbage. Rupa Veda Nasana Sankara Vinyana, i.e. Nama Rupa, i.e. the Khandas. Yeah. You can't have liberation without a liberant. Otherwise, you're just preaching spiritual suicide. Yeah, it's just, that's what Nirvana is. You just like flush yourself down the cosmic toilet of oblivion. <laughs> it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's metaphysically asinine and it's non doctrinal. The old tattooed monkey here has been translating ancient Pali now for a long time. I've debated these people for decades. They never win against me. Never. Not even once. The soul is the dearest beloved. Paramopia, by the way, if you want to know the original Pali. The soul is the refuge that I have gone unto. Atta Dipa Viharate. Atta Sarana Anana. Soul's a refuge with none other is a refuge. So you got a couple more passages here. Here's another good one. Let me go one more passage, okay? There are other passages here. You can download the document in the description below, okay? What do you suppose, followers, if people were carrying off into the Jetta Grove, i.e. the forest, a Jetta Grove is the forest, bunches of sticks and twigs and grasses and branches and leaves, and did with them as they wished, or burned them up, would you think, and it occurred to you, these people are carrying us off, are doing as they please with us, and are burning us? No, indeed, O Lord. And how so? Because, Lord, none of that is our soul, nor what our soul subsists upon. Just so, followers, what is not that which is not who you are, do away with it. When you have made done with that, it will lead you to bliss and welfare for as long as time lasts. Actually, beyond time, because time is part of sansara. 
What is that which you are not, O followers? Form followers is not that which you are. Neither are sensations, perceptions, experiences, or consciousness. Rupa Vedana Sana Sankara Vinyana Ai Namo Rupa. Why am I speaking ancient Pali? Nobody understands what I'm saying. You know what's really weird? Is when you have a dream and you're speaking ancient Pali with other people speak in ancient Pali. And it's been a dead language now for thousands and thousands of years. Isn't that freaky? How often does that happen to me? More than a few. If I'm lying, I'm dying. That's always freaky when you wake up and it's like, oh, that was so cool. I was having conversations in an ancient dead language that no one's spoken for thousands of years. Awesome! <laughs> Anyway, download my document below. All translations are copyrighted by me, but feel free to use them anywhere you like. Yep. And if you like this video, any donation is always warmly welcome. Because the fat tattooed monkey needs coffee, and I definitely need some more vegetables. <laughs> I'm serious about that, though. But anyway, I hope you like this video. Yep. I keep using these rocks as demonstration tools. I picked these rocks up uh, on the Black Sea, Chorone Moria, in Yalta, in Russia. Well, Ukraine. Excuse me, Ukraine. Sorry about that. Some Ukrainian is going to watch this and go, Yalta is Ukraine, not Russia. So sorry. Я забыл. Извините меня. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.